Hey guys, True Knight here. So I'm starting um, my series today that I promised in past videos about uh, me building a deck from scratch and actually going through the motions that I go through and all of those things. Um, I've been thinking on it, praying on it, <laughs> on what deck I want to play, and I decided uh, Mana Deal. Um, we're in a tier zero format. I understand that. Um, but here's the thing. That tier zero format's going to go away by summer, which is in about two months. Sorry, I'm listening to the NHL trade deadline. There's trades happening like crazy. I'm a huge hockey fan, huge Avalanche fan since I was since I came here in '96. I went to their first game ever against Red Wings. It was pretty nuts. If you guys ever want to see me do a video on that or like a podcast, please let me know because I love hockey. I played football for 17 years, but hockey is like my favorite sport anyway um okay so manidium uh sorry i just went off on that tangent but yeah we all have our sports uh brendan beckman the guy that owns ghost gaming is all about basketball dude went to the championship games it was crazy <laughs> i don't know why i'm talking about all this i'm tired it's been a long week anyway okay i digress um so uh what was I talking about with Tier Zero? So, Snake Eye Fire King is going to get hit. We all know that. <clears throat> uh, Snake Eye is going to get hit. Uh, in some fashion. I'll do another ban list prediction here. It's currently March 8th. I'll probably do a ban list prediction March 15th. If we don't have a list by then. Um, just because my last one was before the end of February. So, I want to, <clears throat> as we keep on going through the format... Maybe other things, because I think that's the only reason for the holdup, is that I think Konami is like, yeah, we need to hit Snake Eye in some fashion, but there could be other things like Summon Limit that need to go to. They're just kind of assessing, so we'll see what Sydney brings. I mean, I'm predicting YCS Sydney this weekend to have, similar to Vegas, with uh, probably 85-90% to 90 being Snake Eye Fire King, or some fashion, so. Um, but, Mana Diem, Come summertime, especially with the hits that I think are going to happen, <clears throat> Infernoble will not be the combo deck of the format, as much as I love it, and I think it's strong, and I know Infernoble, and I really wanted to do a deck from scratch with Infernoble, but there's no challenge there because I already know the deck's combos, and I've been practicing them and all those things for hours and hours and hours, but I don't know anything about Minadeem's combos. Um, this is going to be completely new to me. I know it's a gorgeous looking deck and its combos match up to Infernoble, um, if not better. Um, it's kind of like your, take your pick of like what you think, who is better, you know, kind of thing. Like I think Infernoble's nine interruptions with spell negates and Baron and all that are pretty nuts, but some I've seen a lot of boards with Mana Diem end up with like five to seven negates, kind of things like that. So, who knows? I'll I'll assess it after about a month. I'm gonna give myself a month of doing this to see how it goes. Um, so how I'm gonna start this is I picked up what I consider to be the uh, core of the deck, or. I'm a guy that likes, even though there's ratios for every card, I like to pick up three of everything, just because two may work for everybody in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, but I want three, kind of thing. So, um, I've picked up, as you can see, three Riumhard, three Samsara, me, uh, Reichhardt, Starfrost, uh, I have Fenrir's, but I did get this in a trade, uh, just because I don't know if I'm going to play him or not, but I want to. Um, Calarium, Brachphobia, Obsession, Arrival, uh, Imaginings, Reframing, uh, Lightheart, Crashy, uh, Triscuta, Amritara, Primeheart, Ash Love. So... What I want to do today is read through these cards with you. Once I get done reading through them, I'll put together with you guys going through... I'll go through, like, my stuff that I have, my extra cards and monsters and all that stuff. I'll put them all here. Stacks of cards and everything. Uh, 
them, and I might need my Infernoble deck to complete the deck. But, <clears throat> anyway. After I read through all these cards, I'm going to kind of put together a deck list that I've been seeing online and see how it makes sense. I'm going to do it. I'm going to start out with a very generic deck list. Um, and then we'll go over at the end what I plan to do in between this video and episode two. So let me take a sip of water real quick. Let's start what I think all Yu-Gi-Oh! Should players should be doing, which a lot of you aren't. You're just watching on the internet and then picking up the deck. I think that's phony. Like, come on, man, be smarter than that. <sighs> anyway, I could say a lot about the community about that. Um, read the card, guys. Read the card. Please, for the love of God, read the card. Just watching... Oh, I saw a guy's Facebook list where he... I, I literally saw him the other day on... I don't know if it was Vanquish Soul or Sword Soul Facebook where a guy posted a list that he topped a locals with. Like an eight-person locals. And somebody put in the comments... I can't... I'll have to find it, maybe. I think they put in the comments like, I've never played this deck, but it looks really fun. I'm going to pick your list up this week and go try it next week. If you can do all that that quick, cool. To me, that's just idiocy. Like, man of DM, I'm doing it for the content, and I'm doing it because I... I know the longevity of this and I, I have bigger plans than just playing this deck. Um, but some of you guys, it's kind of cringe. Like you see somebody topped with a deck and you're like, oh, I'm picking up that deck and I'm trying it. Like be, be logical. There's something called dueling book. You can just go and practice the deck for free and see if it's your cup of tea. Like, I'm going to read all these cards over, but if you think I haven't already gone on Dueling Book for like two hours and tried out combos and been like, hey, yeah, this is actually pretty fun. Come on, man. Like, be smart, please. Like, we're in 2024. Gallons of milk cost like five bucks. Like, be smart with your money. Be smart with your trades. Don't. So, financially, here's a smart reason why you pick up a deck like this. Right now, nobody cares about this deck. <laughs> It's all snake up, but come WCQ and Nets and all those tournaments in the summer, guess what's not getting hit on the ban list? So guess what's going to go up in price? This was a $300 core before Phantom Nightmare. Now I picked all this up with trades and everything for about $56. And I traded away extra copies of Snake Eyes stuff in DML Stars. But those cards are probably going to be hit in the next couple of months. Like, you guys got to think about stuff like this. Please use your brains. And if you have questions, ask. <laughs> Is it a good idea to pick up this? Is it a good idea to pick up that? Because I'm telling you right now, all those decks that are under Snake Eye Fire King in a couple of months you're going to see it being a 90% showing. It's just going to be the tier limit effect. People are still going to be playing it, but they're going to be playing potentially Snake Eye Ash at 1 and Wanted at 1, and they're going to be living on a hope and a dream where this is at 3. Everything in here is at 3. Like, consistency wins. That's why Snake Eye is so good right now. It is consistent as heck. You need one card to start, you get to play like almost 20 non-engine. But come like WCQ or Nats and things like that, you might be like just struggling to put a core together <laughs> because they might have hit so much. Flameberg to one, Flameberg at zero, um... Ash band like we, we don't know but I'm just saying like be be mindful of that guys like that's my advice that's me dadding you I know I'm a father and just going off of what I say but anyway uh, let's get into reading it so 
Metadium Reimheart. Um, during the main phase, if this card is in your hand, quick effect, you can target one Metadium monster you control, or one monster you control with 1500 attack, 2100 defense, destroy it. If you do, special summon this card. If this card is normal, special summon, you can add one Manadium card from your deck to hand, except Reimheart. Mm -hmm. You can only use the effects here once per turn. So, he's spe normal specials, he can add Samsara. If I have a Manadium card, like Meek, or... Yeah, okay, so it just goes off of Meek. Okay. Or I guess if I have any of the extra deck monsters on, yeah. So if I have like Meek on the board or something, I can just special him. Cool. Or if I have a 2100 defense, 1500 attack. Oh, so if I have Samsara, uh, Rykar, or Starfoss, I can just special this dude. Okay, so that's why he's your main guy. That makes sense. Cool, cool. Uh, Samsara... <clears throat> This card's name becomes Visa's Star for us while on the field or in the grave. You can target any number of Visa's monsters that are banished in your graveyard and on your field. Shuffle those into the deck if you do special summon this card from your hand. And if you do that, it gains 400 attack for each monster you shuffled with a different original name. Holy crap. So if I have Star Frost. Uh, that's it, right? So he'll only gain 400. Okay, makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, uh, wait. You can only use the effects if this card. Oh, if you're just. Oh, cool. So if I'm going to synchro with him, he becomes a tuner. Okay. Level 4 tuner can special if I shuffle back monsters on field, grave, or. Banished, Manatee and Meek. If you control Visa Starfrost or a monster with 1521, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only use the only special summon Manatee and Meek once per turn. So once per turn, I can special this if I have any of my guys on the field. Um, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one Manatee from your deck. You can increase it by it or. Oh shit, okay, so. If I put in the if it's sent to the grave for any reason, I can special another out of my deck and then increase his level. Cool. That makes sense. Scarecrow, you can special summon this card from your hand to the main monster zone adjacent to the Scarecrow monster you control, or in its common, you can only use special summon Scarecrow Ryhark once per turn this way. If this card is normal, special summon you can add one Scarecrow Spar Trap to your hand, three or four. Defensive monsters are on the field. You can draw one card. I see why you play the scare clause with it now. <laughs> Visa Starfrost. Uh, if this card is in your hand, you can target one monster you control with a different type and attribute with this in this card. Destroy that monster, aka Manatee and Meek. And if you do special summon this card, you can only use the effect of Visa Star once per turn. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can make this card gain equal attack to original attack or defense of which one. Oh, cool. Nice. Uh, Cashier, we know that. We know these guys. Peaceful Planet Calarium. When this card is activated, you can add one Manadium. Monster, Visa Star Frost from your deck to your hand. Light monsters you control gain 100 attack for each tuner you control and are in the graveyard. If a face-up tuner you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can target one of those monsters special summit. You can only use the effect plant Pagarium once per turn. Pretty cool. Uh, when this card is activated, you can add one Scareclaw monster or Visa's Starfrost from your deck to your hand. Monsters your opponent control loses a hundred attack for each defense position monster on the field. Three or more defense monsters on the field. Monster control and destroy it. You can only use the effect. Oh, nice. I know some people are playing uh, Paralino with this, but like I said, I'm starting out with a very basic deck. And Paralino, if I'm still doing this for whatever reason, if I fall in love with this deck and keep going with it, 
Uh, it's getting reprinted in Rarity 2, and I already have a case of that, so I'll probably pull like 25 of them. <laughs> so I'm hoping to sell them all for like 10 bucks each. Y'all better buy my cards. Anyway, uh, Mana Demon Session, target one monster you control, destroy it, and if you do, add one Clarium from your deck to your hand. Or if you control Clarium, you can add one Mandium Spell Trap instead. Except Mandium Session, you can only banish this. Oh, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon one Visa Star Frost or monster with a hook from your hand. Hmm. Nice. So it's kind of like a go get and then banish to go and do more. They remind me of Tennies with different. Like effects. Um, target one Scarecrow monster or Visa Star Frost in your graveyard. Special summon in defense. Scarecrow or Link monster you control would be destroyed by. Hmm. Pretty cool. Imaginings. A lot of people aren't playing this right now. Reveal one Manadium monster or Visa Star Frost in your hand. Draw two cards. Then place one card from your hand on the deck. Finish this card from your graveyard and target one monster you control. 1521, treat it as a tuner until end of turn. You can only use the effect. That's a pretty cool card. I can see it as like a one of. Reframing is the Omni Negate. I know that. Uh, Light Hearts. Uh, one Scarecrow monster or Abuse of Starfrost. Uh, you can only use monsters in the mon zone as well as material. If this card is Link Summon in the extra dimension zone, you can add. Pre or Rackphobia. If you control Visa Star of Us, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. Don't forget that effect, because I've been hearing that a lot of people are forgetting that. Cross Sheep is nutso. If a monster is special summoned to a zone that this card points to, you can apply the following effects. Ritual, draw to, then discard, fusion. Uh, special summon one level four or lower monster from your graveyard. Synchro, all monsters you control, X, Y, Z, your opponent controls. Yeah, wow. Pretty dope card, okay. Let's see why you play it. Chiskula, or Synchro Summon, you can target one level two tuner in your graveyard. Special Summon, but negate its effects. Target any number of tuners you control, change your level to two. Also, you cannot Special Summon from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Synchro Monsters. Hmm. Okay. This card's name becomes Visa Star for us while on the field. You can only use each of the following effects of Visa's Armitara once per turn. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can add one spell or trap that mentions Visa Star for us from your deck to your hand. Okay. Um, during the main phase, you can destroy one monster you control. Also, Synchro monsters you control gain 100. Attack this turn. This guy attacks a whole bunch. This can attack a number of times each uh, to the number of tuners used to synchro it. If this card was synchro summoned using a Mandium tuner as material, your opponent cannot target it with effects. If a face, this face up synchro monster card is in its owner's. Control leaves the field because of the you can special summon the one. Huh. Damn. That's a crazy card. Why aren't people playing it? Ash allowed. Um. One of these is. Must be special summoned from your deck by banishing the above cards from the field or graveyard. It cannot be destroyed by battle. If this card is special summoned, you can target one other monster on the field. Destroy it. And if you do, this card. Okay. okay, so going second, it's your like OTK killer. Going first, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's an eight. You get a two out, you can go into a synchro ten. So, okay. Understand. So, hmm. Let's get on this deck. Um, I said very basic show, right? So, I would do three. I might honestly just. This is very basic, guys. Sorry. Three. Three. And I see a lot of people here playing three of him or three visas and then two of the others. So I think I'll do three of him, two of visas. 
And then I need um Where is my extra I had pulled out a whole bunch of staples and stuff for this. Okay, cool. Found my stockpile. Okay. So I'm gonna need three pen here. And one cash tier. So this deck hard loses to draw. Just hearing all the adding and all that crap. So Droll takes a dump on this deck. Pretty hardcore. Um. So how do I fight that? Well. I got one simple answer. I can fight it with this. This is from my Infra Noble deck. Well, I'm using the same sleeves. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to pick up. Sorry. I know I'm thinking a lot in my head. I'm not saying it out loud. I'm going to do that. I'm going to start with this as my main monster engine, my extra um, non-engine stuff will come into play here in a few moments, but let's keep going with spells and trap. I'll lay out the deck first and then I'll do the non-engine. So we're at 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18. Okay. I think these are two are important, but let's see if we have room. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I'm going to play one and one for starters 25 27 perfect 28 leaves me uh, even 40 if i don't i could play this just to have the fourth Rium heart and the fourth reich heart then do i take out imaginings Combo deck, I really only want to play 40. Really only want to play 40. So, call me stupid if you want, but I'm going to do that. Okay. So that's what I'm rolling with. This is going to be my shell for first go through. That leaves me at 28 cards, I think. Or 27, because it'll leave me room to play this. So, let's confirm. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, uh, 20, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So it leaves me at 13 cards. So it leaves me adequate, what I believe is adequate, non-engine stuff. So because I don't know if I'm going first or second every turn, I'm putting my crossouts in the side for going first. Um, so what am I going to play for non-engine? What is potent? Um... I don't want to main deck Nib because I am maining Fenrir, so that will throw off a lot of like functionality and things like that, correct? Um, so what I'm going to start out with, I know this is just a rough draft, I'll edit it if I want to. Three, six, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 
So we got 27, 30, 33, 36, 37, 40. What do you guys think? Um, definitely not going to play shifter. I'm going to side deck nib. I'm going to side cross out. I see a lot of people playing things like or forbidden droplet enemy controller. Which is cool. As I develop with the deck, I'll probably lean into those. But I want to just start now. I want to try this. And then... Yeah, let's try this out. So this will be my first starting out for the deck. Okay. Not too shabby, not too bad. I think that it'll have some work to do with it. I think it's a very basic shell. Which is what I want, because going first, I have this for when I get drolled. I can at least try and get to Fenrir. Um, I see why they play Wraithsoff and Permalino, which is probably something that I'll prioritize. I'll pick up and go and uh, try them out in the deck as this kind of goes along, depending on how much I prioritize Fenrir and uh, Visus in this deck. But um, this is kind of what I want to try. I could put, you know what I could do, which I'm going to do. True, you're a gene ass. I'm going to do this. Instead of three, I'm going to give myself a fighting chance going first if I get, if I win the toss. So instead of three uh, talents, I'm going to go two with one called by and one. Um, good Lord. Brain fart. One reinforcement in the army. Sorry, guys. Oh, right. And then Droll, because Droll craps on a ton of other decks, which is what my meta and my shop doesn't play fire right now, so I don't have to worry about maining Nib um, or anything of that. And then we will kind of go from there. So this is, again, a series to show you how I pick up on this deck and become a lot better with it goal is by it's currently march 8th my goal is by april 8th i'm sitting here doing combo fun test videos with this like i did with infernoble where i'm just able to gel with it and go with it now realistically depending on how much practice i can get in there um i'll be doing this i'll be able to do that within the next like two weeks but um Here's the thing with me is that I'm a hands-on learner, so I could read and watch people do stuff on YouTube all day. Um, but I just need to practice it and just start going with combos and everything of that nature. Uh, mess around with it on Master Duel, mess around with it on Dueling Book, um, all those things and see how I like it. See how I like the ratios, all that stuff. If I make any changes to the deck, that's the first thing we'll go over in episode two is a profile of like, hey, um, this is what I changed out and why and explanations and everything like that. Um, but for today, this is what we're doing. So not too shabby, I don't think. I think that it's going to hold up just fine. I think it's a good basic build. Um, yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. We got our top 40. <laughs> okay. So... We'll shuffle that up a bit. Just get that broken in. I want to talk to you guys about sleeves real quick. I practice like all heck. So I use a hypermet to practice and I play with like 
PCs or things of that nature. Um, sometimes I'll double sleeve if I'm going to a big tournament and I just don't want people putting their grimy hands on my cards. So I'll double sleeve them, but um, for like basic locals, I'll usually play them with like PC whites or I got a couple of things from Sleeve Chief uh, with discount code PAC10. <laughs> I think. Uh, anyway, but yeah. Um, let me know what you guys think. Anyway, so let's move into side decking. We got three, of course. Um, six, nine. And then I think. So what are my biggest Nibtar crossout targets? I think my biggest crossout targets will be um, Nib, Droll, and what? Imperm I have, Ash I have, I guess I could do a Valor. Well, I'm not really scared of that, but I could do a Summon Limit. Right. Yeah, I could do a summon limit. I could do one limit to stop my opponent from summon limiting me. Um, and then what else do I want to do? I want to stop um back row. So. Back row is a real thing here. <laughs> Just looking through my back row hate. I should have cosmics. Gosh, I have too many forbidden droplets. <laughs> uh, this is all stuff I just pick up and don't let go. I don't know why, but anyway, okay. I gotta get these upgraded to secrets. I'm really hoping that they announce it in the rarity collection too, so I can pick them up for like chum change, but we'll see. This is, uh, I just need one more. Gotta choose which one I wanna go with. I'm gonna buy one more today, so fuck it. I got like forty dollars in credit on TCG priority, so um okay, so back row hates uh right spell and trap hate three six nine ten so I got five more cards so I could do like this I'm good with it. So I like this version of Feather Duster better. So I'm gonna do this. Okay. That's what we're rolling with. For our side deck. So we got back row hate, back row hate, back row hate. Um We'll start out here. Kind of roll from there and see what we like. So, all right. So this will go, like, I'm a very nitpicky guy. So back row hate removal and monster hate removal, beta out negations. And we got cross out designator plus an extra thing. So three, Six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't think anything's wrong with that. Shoot, I'm good with it. Okay, so we'll roll with that for the side. I'll go in here now to the extra deck.
Rip. I'm so sad to hear. Creator. Um, passed away, I think it was announced yesterday. Uh, so sad, man. That, that's like one of my favorite dudes in the entire world. His imagination, his creation. If I could get my son to be half the person this guy is, then I've done a good job in this life. <laughs> so, rest in peace, sir. You will be missed. Um, okay. <sighs> anyway, so let's get into the extra deck. Uh, two of these guys. One sheep. And it needs the SP. I could play Apo. Let's see. This is like required, I think. So I'm gonna run this lady too. Very basic shell. We'll get into intricacies as we go. I'm gonna run this guy. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. What do I need? I need Dispater and I need uh, Excel, right? Oh, how could I forget? My boy. My girl, I'm sorry. My lady. I have, you know what's funny is I have one of every version of her from Rarity. Except for Super Rare and Ultra Rare because I hate Ultra Rare. I only play your ultra rare when I have to, but um, I got a collector. I got uh, the ult the ultimate. I got secret, platinum secret, and quarter century. Quarter century is in my infernal deck. Okay, so we need Excel and we need uh, Dispater. Do I need Chaos Angel? No. I'm gonna play Cheng Ying. That card's pretty nutty against the meta right now, huh? Uh, where are you? Here you are. Oh, cool. Okay, so we'll do this. We're at one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, seven. We'll go eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right? Yeah. What else do we need? Star Slayer. Don't act like you don't all do this when you're creating a deck. You're going through all your crap and you're fishing it up. Uh, we will go with Star Slayer. I use him to break up between Link and Synchro, so I'll put him right here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many of this guy do we want to run? Do we want to run two of him and an Apple? I think so. I think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to do that. Starting out. Again, starting out. Um, I have two apples.
Uh, what do you guys think? Should I use a secret? I haven't used the other version in a while. This is my favorite one, though. That is gorgeous. I hope they reprint this in Rarity 2. It's not just the other version. Where's the other version? Uh, yeah, if they do this one, I'm going to be so sad. If they just leave it at this. Please, Konami, reprint this one. <sighs> what else we got? Um... No, we don't play Axis Rain. Okay. So, anyway. Uh, Alright, ready? I'm gonna close my eyes. Whichever one I land on is the way I go. Do 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 I watched you be a goofball. That's how I know you watched my whole video. Um, and it really goes a long way, helps the channel grow, which is what I'm trying to do, guys. Really trying to grow. So I'd appreciate you guys helping that. Um, anyways, what is this? This is my extra staples and stuff. I'm gonna pick up these in secret. Uh, because I want to play the secret much more than the ultra. And I'll probably plan by the next video I'll have that secret up. So, okay. We got the extra deck. We got one, two, three, four, five. Star Slayer. Just go to... Nothing special, it's just your average medium check. But this is what I wanted. I wanted just a basic shell that I've seen. I'm going off of pure memory of what I've seen. Um, and what I practice with on Dueling Book. And we'll kind of go from there. So, homework will be for me to practice with this deck for probably about 10 to 15 hours before I do the next video on episode two and in episode two i'll showcase those combos showcase what i took out and what i'm putting yak in if i do anything like that and then uh we'll kind of go from there as far as um what we're going to lean into with episode three where we'll try and take it to a tourney and see how we do in a tier zero format if it's still tier zero in a couple weeks <laughs> You know, so anyway, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, helps go a long way. This kind of new series is a lot of work. It's a lot of recording. As you can see, we're at 43 minutes right now. So um, I'd appreciate if you guys liked, comment, shared this video, maybe give me some insights. Um, yeah, but I guess the only thing now is to shuffle up and draw. So appreciate you. Peace.